Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing today? Good. 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 It's good to see some familiar faces in the crowd, and so I see some new ones. It's good to have you here. Thank you for all being here today. Uh, welcome to Open Dearborn Mike. If this is your first time here, let me tell you a little bit about DOME, which stands for Dearborn Open Mic in English. Dearborn Open Mic is an inspirational, free, and encouraging, safe, and non-judgmental space where artists can express themselves freely in a friendly gathering. Whether you're an amateur or a professional, everyone is welcome here to share their art. If you like to write, draw, sing, act, share ideas, or simply just watch and listen to different styles of music, poetry, and enjoy creative art, you should be part of Dearborn Open Mic. Dearborn Open Mics meets every third Wednesday of each month from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Arab American Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. There is also a similar Arabic program, DOMA, which stands for Dearborn Open Mic Arabic, which also meets at the Arab American Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. And we would like to, on behalf of Dearborn Open Mic, we would like to thank the museum for opening, it's for providing the space for a nominal fee. Um, and if you know someone who might be interested in the Arabic program, please share the news. All the information is available on dearbornblog.com and on social media. Today we have a great line of artists, but before we begin, we have space for open mic. So if you like to share your writing, I encourage you to sign up on the sheet over there. Please write up your name and uh, you'll come up here and present your writing. We would love to hear you. And if your friend writes, but they're shy or nervous, write their name and make them come up here. We would love to hear them too. Okay, let us begin with a talk by the title, Closing the Arab American Generation Gap by Dr. Abbas Youssef. Dr. Abbas Youssef was born in Lebanon and came to the US for college education. He has been here for 40 years. He is a family man and he has been married to the lovely Najwa Al Hash Hassan for 32 years. Dr. Abbas has raised four children, Camelia, Mazen, Amanda, and Ayman. He would like to be known as the friend of his wife, the friend of his daughter, and the friend of his sons. Professionally, he has a PhD in electrical engineering with concentration on artificial intelligence. He has spent his career in the automotive industry. Dr. Youssef is a product development engineer, a quality expert, and an inventor. Socially, he has been active in the community and is a, is a co-founder of Al Nadwa, which is the Free Thinking Society. Please help me welcome Dr. Abbas Youssef. Good evening, good afternoon, I should say. Thank you, Nada, very much for the warm introduction. Um, <clears throat> I am an engineer. I am not a social engineer. I am not a social scientist by any means. The subject about the gap, the generational gap, is um, very important and very dear to me. Uh, nevertheless, um, it requires to talk about it, not only in the field of psychologist or the field of uh, social science. I think it's important to talk about it from just anyone can talk about it and must talk about it. So I really want to thank you for guys for, with Sam in particular, for the inv invitation to speak about this important subject. Uh, that's why I wondered why he asked me, and uh, when I am not an you know, expert in social studies. Uh, as I said, I'm an engineer, a uh, parent to four adults, now that they are on their own, on their own life. Um, all I say is that I accepted to take the challenge and approach the subject from my own experience. Raising uh, or help 
uh, as a member of my family, help raising my family, and the issues that challenged us, challenged me in particular. I've been here for 40 years. We came in May 7, 1979, with a high school diploma. And within four and a half years, I was, uh, I graduated with a master's degree. So I finished the English, I finished the bachelor, and a master's degree. And I was on my way to work for General Motors. So during these years, I worked full time and uh, took care of myself and also a brother who came in 1980 after me. Um, so we really worked very hard to be where we at. At the same time, while I was in college, I worked full time and a friend of mine in my, at, after I left uh, the university, went back to work, then I went back to do my PhD in 1986-87, and I finished in 1990-92. And the guy said, uh, when I, in my graduation, he said, we did not know whether Abbas is a full-time worker, full-time student, or a full-time activist for that matter. So that's what tell you a little bit about how important uh, the society is to me I made a, I made a uh, um, commitment to building a better society. Actually, if they asked me, um, why do you do what you do? I said, I'd like to have a free country and a happy people. As a matter of fact, free world and a happy people. That's really my logo. That's really my motto. With that in mind, what does that mean to this talk. Um, it is very important to learn about what we do because what we do, if we learn, learning what, why we do what we do, makes all understand the individual and who he or she is. So our identity is pretty much tied to what we do and mostly why we do it. The generation gap or generational gap is a difference of opinions between one generation and another regarding beliefs, politics, or values. In today's usage, generation gap often refers to a, a perceived gap between younger people and mostly their parents and grandparents. Um, so, I went on and took the challenge to really do some research, but I did a lot of lot of research. But it seems like um, I want to I want to focus on a few things. Like, what is the hierarchy of needs in in, in the society for individual? I do because I work because I really really have to meet the, what we call it, is recently was uh, referred to as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. First of all, is a physiological need. Uh, I must tell you because it's related. The whole thing of, of understanding the difference between the young and the old, or the young generation and the older generation, is really understanding this need. Well, the hierarchy of needs is really you gotta have food, water, and rest, and security. Then the next level is is the, the pyramid is intimate relationships, which is friends, you know, family, society, and then over it is self-esteem, feeling who, of accomplishment and who we are, and then at the end, we, we call it self-actualization, achieving one's full potential, and that is still a lot of debate about that. Okay. In, in, the, uh, uh, in the field of psychology and field of sociology. There's a lot of, uh, even though they accepted the, the, the uh, hierarchy of needs, but there is a lot of, what is self-actualization self for an individual? What is self-actualization for anyone? This is, a big, this is a big thing. I know it's a very important topic and I'm trying to, uh, you know, keep it uh, 
uh, keep it, you know, between the science and between my experience. Well, um, first, the the individual is really is really um, there are a lot of theories. I'm sorry, there are a lot of theories in uh, that that describes that, um, but. One of, you know, a lot of these theories, for example, relies on, um, on, focuses on this hierarchical need. Like, um, a person wants to feel um, important in society. Um, the social construction theory, which is really is anything that exists by virtue of social interactions, as opposed to objective reality, you know but most important is social interactions. Uh, social interactions also known, let's say, if I speak about the gold. The gold in the society, we take it to be a value now, right now, you know, hey, gold is very valuable. But if another society that the gold is not valuable, they wouldn't even go to, to dig gold or, or, or uh, uh, even value gold. It depends on what the society puts a value on. Society put a value on gold, so everybody thinks the gold is very valuable. Um, social expectations is very similar to that virtue. So if I expect, you know, then the behavior becomes acceptable. You know, if society feels that a certain type of behavior is acceptable, then that behavior becomes acceptable. The inverse of this is also true. If society determines that a behavior is unacceptable, then that behavior becomes unacceptable. 